All right, so this is a rare, a rare case of me being right in front of the camera, but whatever. I'm recording this on a new phone I just got, and it's not a very good phone. I might bring it back, so if it doesn't sound very good, it's because the phone is not the best, but I had to get a new phone. But today I decided to do a little video on uh, movies that, uh, Blu-rays that I have that I wish I had commentaries that don't, or at least it had commentaries from directors. Cause some of these have commentaries on them, but not from who I'd want to hear from. So considering that I love talking about commentary so much, and you know, I've been doing a bunch of videos about them recently, I figured I'd just continue the trend and do a little video about Blu-rays from my collection that don't have Blu-ray com commentaries, director commentaries, writer commentaries that I wish they did. So, so in random order, but I'm just taking from the pile. So here's 2001. It's a pretty decent set, and there is a commentary on it from the actors by uh, by the two guys that played the two uh, astronauts, or whatever. One of them was Dave, I guess. But it doesn't have a commentary from Stanley Kubrick, so who would not love to hear a commentary from Stanley Kubrick about his masterpiece? I mean, shit. I have no idea if, if Kubrick's ever done a commentary, but obviously we all know that's not going to happen. <clears throat> Alright, so this one, is the, I'm going to just combine them all in one, but the entire Dark Knight trilogy. Now, who would not love to hear Christopher Nolan do a commentary on these movies, holy shit, or maybe even just, you know, everyone's favorite, The Dark Knight, yeah, I mean, you know, definitely one of the best, better comic book trilogies to come out in the past, like, decade, so, and why not hear about Christopher Nolan and how he managed to, like, reboot and a franchise so amazingly well, I mean, who wouldn't want to know more about that, but... Would love to hear Nolan talk about this movie. Silence of the Lambs. This one would be great to have any kind of commentary, either from like Jodie Foster or the director or Ted Ted Demi, Jonathan Demi. Sorry, I say Ted. Uh, or you know, the writer or Anthony Hopkins, any one of those people. And you know what? If I'm wrong and there is a commentary on this one. I mean, I haven't listened to it in a while, so, because sometimes they don't put it on there. Some some movies don't actually put it on the back, but there's a commentary. Then you go into it, and you find out there is. It's weird. But I'll next one, I'm pretty sure this one doesn't have it, and I would love it if it did. Yes. Imagine hearing Al Pacino and or Brian De Palma and or... Oliver Stone talking about this movie it would be amazing one of my most favorite movies ever it would just be so epic to hear all imagine if all three of them did a commentary how cool would that be right there beautiful another one that's kind of newish but the Revenant this one doesn't have any kind of commentary on it and it was my favorite movie of 2015 I loved it. It's like art house, some kind of new genre of art house survival or something. I, I, I like calling it, but but yeah, I mean, we've all heard the stories about how brutal the director, whose name I'm not even gonna try to pronounce. Um, he was pretty brutal on the crew, and there's been stories about it. And I don't know, not that we would hear much about that in the commentary, but it, it would just be cool to see about how they shot this and whatnot. And the logistics involved and all those kind of things. Because I actually like hearing about that stuff. There's one that has a commentary, but it's not by who I would like it to be by. And obviously that would be the Coens. This is their first movie. And it's a freaking great movie. It's not... I wouldn't call it a Coen film if you've seen it. It's a good movie. But the Coens didn't really find their style until... Raising Arizona, which is actually my favorite Cohen movie. And but this one does have a commentary, but it's by some guy from this thing called Forever Young Films, which isn't a real company that did some weird made up some type of 
they have they even have a little feature that's on this that's not on the back of the box that's in there but they have a strange little feature in it where I'm making of but it's done in a weird fake style like it's almost like a mockumentary I don't know why and but the guy in that does the commentary on this so even the commentary is kind of a mockumentary and I don't really know why they did that because I would love to hear the Coens doing a commentary on their first film I mean that would be the that would be amazing and as far as I know the Coens don't do any commentaries because I have no country for old man and that doesn't have one either Yeah, another one that I really love, that I would love to hear about, would be, you know, Luke Besson talking about The Professional, Leon. This is such an amazing movie. Natalie Portman just blew me away in this film, and it was why she's she's still one of my favorite actresses, because of this role, but also because I think she's just a very solid actress in general. She's never really been terrible, except for maybe in Thor. Yeah, maybe Thor. But yeah, Luke Besson... Or, or even, you know, Natalie Portman and Jean Reno, Gary Oldman, you know, that'd be pretty cool to hear about, hear from any of them, I'm um, talking about this movie. That'd be great. <clears throat> Drive. My favorite movie of 2011. I love this movie. It's like a modern masterpiece. And nope, no commentary on it. No nothing. Either from Nicholas Winding Refn. Or the winding? I say winding. Maybe I'm wrong. Or, you know, the writer. Hussein Hussein Amini. Yeah, who I would love to hear what they had to say about this. Or, you know, Ryan Gosling, who basically is the reason why the movie is the way it is. Because originally it was supposed to be with Hugh Jackman, and it was supposed to be a Fast and the Furious style film. But then... Gosling got signed on, and it totally tra changed into what it became, and the hearing about that would be awesome. Oh shit, the disc is loose. I hope it's not scratched up. Shit. The disc was loose in the case, that's not good. Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. To hear Charlie Kaufman do a commentary on this would be the best. I'm not sure if Coffin does commentaries. I've actually been meaning to get adaptation because I love that movie. I really like, I really, really like adaptation. I actually love it. It's probably my favorite Spike Jones slash Coffin film. Of the two, they basically did. Or maybe they've done more now. I don't know. But, but this would be awesome to hear about. Just because, you know, it's a really cool story. And it's unique. Or even Michael Gondry, who directed the shit out of it. So... That would be great. Yeah, another Nolan film, Inception. I mean, I could just bundle this in with the other movies because, you know, don't need for a commentary. As far as I know, that Nolan ever did was on Memento. And that's a great movie. And this would be awesome to hear about, you know, just this. A totally original story that he did. They did after The Dark Knight. He's like, hey, you know, I'm going to take a break from making the most amazing Batman series of all time and make a totally original, amazing movie. And then, you know, go back and finish off the rest of the series and, and rock that. I mean, no one has just been on fire ever since Memento. So, you know, I'm not going to say I like Interstellar that much. It was way too long and super, I don't know, there was just something about that didn't really jive one the first mcu film iron man that would be lovely to have commentary on it the hero of fire from john Favreau, who's gone on to direct some huge blockbusters since this and you know not i don't think many of the actors from the mcu films do commentaries i have both the avengers and they have a commentary with joss whedon but there's no actors on there Though there is, though Ryan Gosling, Ryan Reynolds is on uh, Deadpool, but but that would be cool to really hear about this movie and how they managed to shoot it because they didn't really have a script when they shot it. They basically just came in in the on the day and decided to shoot what they shot. So, and this one I'm actually just gonna lump it all in together because you know why not? But 
These are these are the only Tarantino films I own. Actually, no, I have Kill Bill too. I forgot to pick it up, but I don't have every single one of his movies. But right here, who anyone would love to hear a commentary about this movie? I mean, holy shit! You don't even need to talk about the rest. I mean, the thing is, I'm the I'm not sure if this Reservoir Dogs has it. I remember when I had the the twenty the tenth anniversary DVD, and it came in a box case. It was uh, it came with something that was it was a it was a, a commentary, but it was just a collection of interviews. But they made it seem like a commentary, and I'm not sure if this is on the Blu-ray as well because it doesn't say on the back. No, but. On that DVD, they had like a collection of interviews that they just spliced together to go over on a separate track. So it was kind of like an audio commentary, but it was more like just interviews and shit. So an actual commentary from you know Tarantino about his first film ever, or his next film, or any of his films. I mean, who wouldn't love to hear something about any one of these movies? So I ended on Tarantino because why not? Maybe it's cliche to do that, but whatever. So that's it. That's my little movie about the commentaries I wish were out there. They're not, but I think maybe I'll take a break from all the commentary stuff. Unless they come up with another idea. But for now, I'm saying peace out. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.